the water out and start with a whole new fresh thing of water. What you can do is just pour off the top layer the, where the uh, unused activator is off staying and just fill it back up. Maybe if you're using a container, tip it to the side. If you're doing it outside, just let the top layer just run off onto the ground and then just, you know, again, you know, fill it back up. Uh, one really good thing is if you got access to warm water, hot water, you can always just run warm water. And like I said, you want to stay around that 84 degrees range, 84 to 89 degrees. That would be awesome. If you're a little cooler than that, it should still work fine. Okay, we're going to put our material into the water and let it start uh, hydrating. And once you get your material in the water, if you get it and you want to lay it in there nice and smooth you don't want any air bubbles and especially you don't want no water on top of your print it will mess the print up so you want to be real gentle putting it in there this is a reaction the water the, the print starting to hydrate with the with the water and uh, once you've got it in the water you want it to sit in there for about two minutes you want to have a, like a wash or a timer with you 60 seconds you want to let, give it 60 seconds to hydrate good and absorb the, the moisture and everything like that if there's any air bubbles you can just reach down and just blow on them and blow them all out to the edge and that'll be fine that's how you get your air, air bubbles out but again you have to be real careful laying it in there you don't want you don't want to get any water on top and you want to not get a whole lot of air bubbles here's a small air bubble you just You just blow it to the edge and they'll be out of your way and it will cause you no problem. If you can't get them all out, it's not a huge deal. So don't freak out if you get a few air bubbles in there. All right, now is the waiting time. You wait again for about 60 seconds. All right, uh, this, we, the print's been in the water now for 60 seconds and we're fit to play the dip wither activator on the print. What we want to do is nice, smooth, even coat, overlap about a third uh, and everything. And then what this is going to do, it's going to burn off the carrier and it's going to turn this to liquid. This, this, this liquid is going to be floating right on top of the water. So here we go. And you want to be about 18 inches off the print if you get real close. It'll make the print move and it'll bunch up to the top or the bottom. You don't want that. You just keep going across like this and it'll start liquefying. There you go. All right. All right. I have my rifle stock. I'm fixing to dip it. You always dip at an angle. You never want to go flat into it because it'll cause flat spot. It'll catch air between the print and the and the object, and I'm uh, I'll put bad spots. So you want to be at an angle. And it ain't gonna be a, a humongous, but the other angle. And once you start, you don't stop. You go into it. You smoothly dip in. Not stopping. And once you get it under there, you can leave it under there for a couple of seconds if you want to, so everything will equalize. Then you just pull out, and there you go. Okay, now once you dip it, it's got a starchy film on it. It's got it, 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 it's it's like a, a gooey surface, and we've got to rinse that off. Okay, you start out lightly, and you lightly rinse it, and what you do if you keep wrenching the object until you can touch it and it doesn't feel gooey anymore if it's got a flat feel you're good to go and when you touch it be real gentle if you touch it if, if you push this this material is still real soft and you can put a spot on it but you just want to go back and forth and just rinse it sometimes it takes a while but take your time you don't want to be real rough with the water if you're real tough you, you might blow off some of the print you don't want that to happen and you just rinse it. And if you get like a this little, little black lines and stuff in here, it will eventually fall off. You'll see as, as I rinse it, it will eventually, or you can touch it. I don't recommend touching it a whole lot or, or really howling the object right now because it's still in a real soft state. And as, as time goes on, you can get a little bit more aggressive with the rinsing and all because now it's really starting to stain into the paint what you want to do and again see as you, as you rinse the more you rinse eventually that'll just fall off a lot of people try to push that off and then i have to put myself a little spot on there and they regret it later so we don't want that to happen okay uh i just got done rinsing my object and i can touch it now and it feels nice and flat and also now as you as you get dipped and you're rinsing if you've got a bad spot now don't freak out we're going to show you at the end how to touch those little spots up so 
don't think that it's, it's bad or it's ruined or, or you, you've done something wrong. Now, as you can see where I taped off the back side here, when I pulled that off, it didn't get any print on it, didn't get any dip on or anything like that, and that's what we want. Now, what we'll do is we'll take and tape this side off. Uh, one uh, hint, when you're taping a side that's already been dipped and colored, again, Try to use paper as much as you can. Use just a little bit of tape because tape has a tendency to pull this print off. And again, you'd have to go back and touch it up. So try to use as much, as much paper as possible when you tape it off and just use a little bit of tape and use an inexpensive tape. Some of it doesn't stick real, real strong because you don't want it, you, you don't want to pull your print off as it be more work when it comes to the touch up phase. But as you can see, here's where I, I taped it last time, the tape line. See how it's nice and crisp? And what we'll do, see, we'll go back and we'll put the next line, we'll tape that material as close to that line as we can. And then we'll dip this side, and then we'll untape this, and both sides will be that way then. And we'll blend it together by touching it up, and then we'll clear coat it, and then we'll be done with the, with, with, with the job. This is a, a stock that I just finished up, and this one I did in the, the, the two-sided process where I taped off one side, I dipped it, then I covered up what I dipped, and, and dipped the other side. And as you can see, there, there's a little seam going across here. And what we did is we took a little bit of lacquer thinner, or you can take activator, and spray it into like the, uh, a top of a paint can. And we took a piece of film with a brush, and we just brushed it on there, and we, we weaved the two together. And you can almost, you can't even hardly tell there's a seam in there now. And if you go to a gun shop or something, and you get a store-bought rifle shotgun that's been dipped from the factory, they have seams too. Some of them have one seam at the bottom, some of them have a seam at the top and the bottom. But as you can see, once you get everything done and it, it all comes together, and then you take your dip with your clear coat, last step, once everything is good and dry and all, and you spray a coat of clear on that'll lock in the color, that'll keep it from fading, and everything like that. And once this dries, you're pretty much done. Time to enjoy your, your gun or whatever you want to do.